I am the executive director of Welcome Springfield, a nonprofit organization in Springfield, Ohio, that serves immigrants and educates our community on the value that immigrants bring to our economy and to our culture, uh, not only in, in Springfield, but in the entire state. Second, the second half that I'm wearing is that I am an evangelical pastor, and I believe that immigration reform is not only an important economic issue, uh, but for me, it's a moral, ethical, and spiritual issue. I'd like to address a couple of the reasons why it's important that we, that we be here today. First of all, it's because we are losing a global uh, race for talent. And our current nation's approach to immigration reform was last updated in 1965. The world has changed since then. We need the talent that immigrants bring to our economy and to our culture. And that's one uh, reason why we're having this conversation today. Um, second is Congress has failed to address this issue. I noted earlier, it hasn't been updated in a comprehensive way since 1965. So think about how much the world has changed over that period of time, and yet our immigration policy hasn't. So we're severely uh, we're outdated in that, in that uh, regard. Um, and we, we had a chance to do this. What's, what's very regrettable is the Senate passed a bill uh, two or three years ago. The House refused to act on that. So we, we've already missed an opportunity. And it's time for us to go back to that and, and to complete what started with a congressional response to uh, the need for immigration reform. There's huge public support for immigration reform. Studies have found that three out of four Americans support the basic principles associated with comprehensive immigration reform. So it's an easy sell to Americans that this is a system that needs to be fixed. And what makes this uh, especially urgent today is that on April 1st, the H-1B visa application lottery is going to open. Um, and the same thing is going to happen this year that happened in subsequent years. All of the positions that are available for high-skilled foreign-born workers are going to be taken within the very first few days that that lottery opens. And then businesses that need high-skilled foreign laborers who have to wait another year to have another chance to, to go after that. So those are some of the reasons why uh, we are here today. Uh, Forward.us has done much to advance the cause of comprehensive immigration reform on a national level. In fact, they're one of the uh, primary voices informing our national leaders about the economic, uh, technical, and educational value that immigrants bring to the United States. Here in Ohio, immigrants uh, represent about 6% of the student population in our universities, but they account for over 50% of our STEM graduates. And if you look at our premier doctoral programs in, in areas like engineering, international students account for anywhere from 75% to over 90% of the graduate students, depending on the program that you're looking at here in, in Ohio. Um, these are not uh, students who are going to take American jobs. These are people who are going to make American jobs. So it's critical that we take a look at this issue and reform policies that are not working. It's very exciting and a great honor for, to me to be able to formally announce the launch of the Forward.US uh, Ohio Coalition. Uh, Forward was founded to, uh, by leaders in the uh, tech community, and Forward.US Ohio Coalition is an alliance of business leaders, uh, community activists, uh, and concerned citizens like myself who fundamentally believe that our immigration system is outdated and it's broken and it's time for Congress uh, to fix it. Our system prevents far too many, uh, prevents far too many talented immigrants from fully contributing to our communities and to our economy. Forward.us Ohio Coalition is united around three central tenets, including, uh, number one, we need to unlock the full economic potential that immigrants bring to the Ohio economy. Second, we uh, agree that, in border, that border security needs to be improved. So improving border security making sure that we know who's coming into our country, that's an important principle, and we stand behind that and support it. And then third, we believe that it's very important to create a comprehensive pathway toward legalization. Without a comprehensive pathway toward legalization, we are on a path toward deporting 11 million people. That is equal, equivalent to rounding up every citizen of Ohio. Imagine if every resident in Ohio dispersed to the rest of the countries in the United States and then had to be found, arrested, and deported. That's what a policy looks like that deports 11 million people. And I'm going to come back and talk about that a little bit more in a couple of minutes. 
uh, forward.us has, has brought us and our speakers today uh, to discuss the need for comprehensive immigration reform. Today you're hear from a number of people. Um, in addition to myself, you will hear from uh, Josh Davda, the owner of Optimum Technology, and Pat Valente, the president of Thai Ohio. Uh, as I stated earlier, my name is Carl Ruby, and I'm honored to uh, share why I believe that immigration reform is necessary from a moral uh, perspective. Uh, I've learned that there are important economic cases, there's a, there are important tech, there's a technical argument to be made, there's an educational argument to be made, but I come at this primarily as an evangelical pastor, and uh, I believe that it's in our best interest as a nation for moral reasons to pass comprehensive immigration reform. As an evangelical, I draw my beliefs from scripture. And in the Hebrew Old Testament, there are over 90 references to how people of faith should treat immigrants. And we are told that God loves immigrants. We are told that we ought to love immigrants. And it's amazing how specific the Hebrew scriptures are on how we are to treat immigrants. We are told um, to make sure that they are paid fairly. We are told to make sure that they are not overworked. We are told to be, make sure that they have access to justice. And most important, we are told to treat immigrants as though we would treat members of our own family. And as I think of immigration reform, that is the principle that drives me. How would I want this policy to be written if it were my son or my daughter waiting on the other side wanting, wanting to, uh, to come in? And then Jesus reinforces these principles in the New Testament in passages like the parable of the Samaritan and the Sermon on the Mount. So support for a comprehensive approach to immigration reform is, is core to my principal beliefs as a, as a person of faith. America as a nation is generous. America is compassionate. America is innovative. Our current immigration policy was last updated in 1965 and it flies in the face of each one of those values. Uh, this is not a liberal issue, it's an American issue. As an evangelical pastor, I call on my congressman, Warren Davidson, and my senators, uh, Senator Brown and Senator Portman, Senator Portman to oppose any rhetoric that attacks the human dignity of immigrants and to aggressively pursue comprehensive immigration reform that addresses all the concerns that Forward.us has been talking about. I would like to take a moment and just speak specifically about one aspect of immigration reform that is dear to my heart, and that is uh, DACA. DACA is Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, and it gives young immigrants who are brought here as children who have been here for over 10 years, who are involved in work or study, and have a clean criminal record to work and study without fear of being detained and being deported. It does not give them permanent legal status. It does not give them citizenship. It just allows them to come out of the shadows and work and contribute to our economy. Um, nearly 90% of DACA uh, recipients are employed. 95% are either employed or in school. They're employed in all aspects of our economy. I have one personal story to share with you. I was at a church and I was talking to a young girl who was graduating from high school. She had grown up in the United States, had no knowledge of the country where she was born. She was incredibly fluent. She excelled in the sciences. And I said to her, I, I said, what are you going to do next year when you graduate from high school? And she said, I think I'm going to study to be a um, uh, cosmetology. And there's nothing wrong with being a cosmetologist. Um, but I said, have you, you, you're excelling in the sciences, you've got great grades, have you thought about getting a degree in the sciences? And then she became very quiet and said, uh, I don't have documentation, I can't get any financial aid, I can't get a college education. That's a waste of, it, it, number one, I believe it's, it's an immoral practice, but it's a waste of talent. Personal example of, of my having seen this uh, first case. Second, there's a huge financial cost if we repeal DACA, um, ending DACA, would remove 700,000 people from the workforce in a single day. Um, unemployment rates would rise in businesses. Uh, businesses would close down. The, the cost, in terms of our gross uh, domestic product over a decade, would be four, over $433 billion. So repealing dockage is immoral. It, it's wrong in terms of technology. It's wrong in terms of our economy. It's a massive waste of uh, taxpayer dollars. And uh, it, it, I'm, and very anxious to see Congress act and, and, uh, and, and make a, take a permanent approach to the solution. I want to speak very quickly to one particular issue. And 
I have grown up as a Republican, um, have typically voted Republican my entire life. Uh, there have been a couple of exceptions. Um, and the exceptions have been primarily over this issue, in the way that I've heard Republican candidates talk about immigration reform. But much of the, much of the opposition against, uh, from Republicans has been the fact that this was an executive order. I want to speak to that issue because I, it's something that I've learned that I think is very important. The Republican Party is part of Lincoln. And uh, Lincoln had a plan to try to deport all the slaves and to recolonize them. And he only abandoned that plan when he realized it was mathematically impossible, that it would never be accomplished due to the birth rates occurring among slaves. And at that point, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation as an executive order. And now we look back on that and herald it as one of the greatest accomplishments of our nation. And Criticism from Republicans over the fact that DACA is an executive order is hypocritical as, as a party of Lincoln. And instead of complaining about it, we need to rally our forces in the Senate and in the Congress and now in the White House and quickly pass comprehensive immigration reform that produces a permanent solution to all of these issues that, that we are so concerned about. 